What's going on guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well today. In this video, we're gonna be covering text fields with Swift UI. So I've gone ahead and created our text fields module. You guys should pause the video and do the same. And I just wanna talk about what we're gonna be doing in this video. So we're gonna start with the basics. We're gonna go over how to set text fields up, how to use them, and all of the different customization options we have and stuff like that. And then by the end of this video, guys, we are gonna build out this awesome login page that you see here for this messenger app I have built. Now this full course is available on the website. You guys just go to the courses section. It's the messenger pro course and it's a full scale messaging app. But basically this is what we're gonna be building by the end of this video. I could go ahead and log in as like lewis at gmail.com. One, two, three, four, five, six for my password. And we are gonna be going over how to set this stuff up in this video, guys, with like the password fields and the text fields and how to get the customization we see here and all in the process of building this amazing login page that we see here. Um, and then, you know, guys, with the actual app, I'd be able to like log in and start messaging people and all that good stuff, but we're not, we're not there just yet, right? Uh, let's start small and uh, then this is something you guys can do after this bootcamp has completed. Um, but anyway, we'll come back to this. Let's go ahead and get started with text fields, guys. So uh, it's, well, let's go ahead and create a VStack. And this is pretty simple to create, right? We are just gonna say text field and you're gonna open up, let's see, let's get our different options here, right? So we're gonna use this guy that says title key and text. So this creates a text field with a text label generated from a localized title string. So the title key is basically gonna be our placeholder, guys. And there's a couple other options you see here. We're gonna go over those in a little bit. Let's just go ahead and get this guy on screen first. So let's go ahead and add this guy, like enter your email or something, right? And we notice this uh, text property that we have to pass in as well. And we notice it has to be a binding string. So what the heck is that? We haven't seen that just yet. I'm gonna show you guys how to solve this. So we basically need to create a state property for our text uh, pr uh, like parameter here, guys. So I'm gonna say state var email, and it's just gonna be a blank string. So this is the property that is going to store the text that gets typed into that text field. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. You're gonna go ahead and pass in dollar sign email. And we are gonna cover what exactly this dollar sign means and what a binding property is in the next video. I just wanted to uh, us to get started with text fields before we do that, guys. But if you look on the screen now, you guys will see a text field here, and I can start typing information into that text field, right? And that's super awesome, and it's as simple as that. So let's see. I think my preview's being a little bit laggy here. Let's just go ahead and like do something to reset it. Okay. So that looks pretty good, right? Um, guys, what I want us to do next is see if we can create just like another text field below that. And we're gonna say text fields. And let's go ahead and do this option here, title key, text, and access. So let's uh, maybe say like enter your bio. And here we need to pass in another text parameter. So we're gonna create another state property, state var bio equals a blank string, and then we're gonna say dollar sign bio. And for our axis, let's just go ahead and do dot vertical. I wanna show you guys the difference between these two things, and then we're gonna start customizing our text fields. So let's give each one some padding. And you guys notice we don't have any borders or anything like that just yet, that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and start typing some stuff into this text field, guys, and I want you to pay attention to what happens. You guys will notice that it automatically starts uh, going on to new lines when I reach the end of my frame for that particular text field. Whereas with this one, it's not gonna do that, right? It's gonna like start expanding horizontally and it sort of starts scrolling horizontally. So that's a really nice trick with this vertical axis. This is more for like long form text for a user, pretty much like something you would see with like entering a bio, right? So anyway, um, that just is pretty much uh, the main two types of text fields you're gonna use, guys. Nothing fancy here, um, and I think you guys understand what a text field is, right? It's just a component that allows user to type text into it so that you can ultimately use that text somehow later. Like, for example, in a login form or something like that, right? The important thing to understand here is the use of these state properties. So this email property is going to keep track of the text that the user types into that text field. So for example, 
let me just say dollar sign email and that will reset my preview. If I typed in like test at gmail.com, every time I type something into that field, it stores the value of that string in this property right here so I can access it later. So for example, if I had like a login button, which we'll build out in a little bit, I'd be able to hit login and then use the email that my user typed into that field. And that's just what these state properties are used for. And the reason they have to be state properties, guys, is because every time the user is typing something, it is updating our UI or the state of our application, right? So anyway, guys, let's go over how we can start to style our text fields and get a little more fun with this. So I want you guys to go ahead and just apply a background to this. And let's just say like dot red for now. And you guys will notice that that is the current frame of my text field, right? So um, let's go ahead and see if we can make this look a little bit cleaner. So first off, guys, we can apply fonts to text fields as well. We can say dot subheadline. And we notice that like that changes the font of our text field. And everything that applies to text components in terms of the font modifier applies to text fields as well. Like I could say large title, and then I would have a massive text field here, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, Let's go ahead and make that subheadline. Then we're going to say dot padding of 12 pixels. We're going to say dot background and we're going to say color dot system grouped background. Okay. So that gives it that really like sort of faded gray look, which you see in a lot of text fields and a lot of forms. And then we can go ahead here and say dot corner radius of 10 pixels. And that will give it those nice rounded edges, right? And you guys notice the padding has gone away. I can just put the padding on my V stack to uh, why is that being mean to me? It shouldn't be. I think my preview is just being mean. Yeah, so that looks good, right? So that's a really nice looking text field right there, right? And you guys can sort of customize these however you want. There's a couple different text field styles. So we could say like dot text field style. And there's a couple ones, right? You could say plain text field style, default, rounded border, and you guys can just go and play around with those. But you could also have like the ability to fully customize it to look how you want. I don't typically use these text field styles. Um, another important feature is we have keyboard types, guys. So I could say dot keyboard type, and I could go here and say dot. And you guys will notice that I have a bunch of different options for the key, uh, potential t keyboard types that could be associated with that text field. So it could be a URL, it could be a decimal pad, it could be email, it could be a number pad, all of that good stuff, right? So for example, I would want email address for this and that is going to like add the at symbol on the keyboard and stuff. Um, guys, I don't think the keyboard shows up in the, sim in the preview. So what we could do to see this working is uh, just go ahead and go up to our app file and let's pass in the text fields module as the root view of our application. And we can just go ahead and run this bad boy with command R. And I just wanna show you guys what this is gonna look like with the keyboard. And something that Swift UI does, which we'll see here in a second, which is really, really nice for us, and you guys just give this a second to launch, is that you guys will notice that when the keyboard launches, it automatically moves my view up and down to make sure it adjusts accordingly based on the size of the keyboard. So that's something that previously as a developer, you had to do manually yourself and it was really annoying. So this is super helpful that Swift UI just gives us this for free. But you guys can see here that I have this uh, sort of email keyboard type, right? So if I start typing out, let's see, like an email. Um, oh, and guys, by the way, if you type on um, your keyboard while on, like from your computer, while the simulator is up, it will dismiss the keyboard. So if you wanna keep this up, you have to click. And really quickly, I need to mention how to show the keyboard. You guys can just hit Command K to show or hide the keyboard in the simulator. So that's a nice feature. And it's definitely good to make sure you guys test this when you're building apps, as we'll see in the future, just to make sure everything works as expected when the keyboard is showing. But you guys can see here that we get the at symbol right here because this is an email keyboard type. So let's play around with a couple different ones really quickly. Let's do like a number pad. And then let's maybe make like the keyboard style. There's a, there's a, there's a way to uh, 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 make the keyboard like a, a dark mode keyboard, um, but we can co come back to that later. Let's go ahead here. And you guys can see now that I have a number pad. And if you guys hold down Command, Shift, and A, it will automatically adjust this to be 
uh, go, go into dark mode and you guys see that we automatically get that updated keyboarding st uh, styling for free uh, with the system dark mode. So that's really awesome. So that's just a couple different like features you guys can play around with with the, uh, the keyboard types and stuff like that. I'm going to keep this as email address. And um, another thing we can do, guys, is we can say dot auto correction disabled. And for some reason, if you don't want auto correct there, you can say you can disable that. Um, and depending on what kind of field it is, like if it's like a username input or something like that, you might not want auto correct in there. And there's just a bunch of different modifiers that we have access to with these text fields. Um, I believe there's another one. Yeah, auto capitalization or text input auto capitalization. And this controls how things are capitalized. So you could say dot never, and that's going to match up more with our email address field, right? Because we don't want anything in our email address to be capitalized. So let's see. You guys will notice as soon as I start typing now, it doesn't default to start to have the first guy as a capital letter. And in some things, you might want to have your keyboard um, capitalize everything or start capitalizing every word. So Apple gives you all of this stuff for free, which is so, so cool, right? So tons of customization we can apply to our keyboards, guys. Let's go ahead and see if we can finally build out this uh, awesome login page that we saw earlier. Um, so really quickly, uh, let me just pull up the simulator and let me go back over to Messenger. Let me log out so we can get a nice preview of this guy and let me adjust my screen size and we're gonna start building this bad boy out. Cool. Okay, so let's resume our preview, go back to our text fields module, and let's uh, give this guy the same set of modifiers that we gave our uh, field up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this stuff, and bam, put that right there. And this one we're going to say password, guys. And let's modify this state property to be password. And we're gonna say dollar sign password, and then we can delete this axis guy. So here's our two uh, form fields. Um, and you guys will notice that back in the completed application, or what we're building here, that when I type info into the password field, the characters are hidden, which is super cool, right? So how do we do that? Guess what, SwiftUI makes it super easy. And instead of having a text field, here, text field here, guys, we can have a secure field. And this comes built in with all of the password functionality that we get from Apple, right? Like this will ask the user if they want to auto-generate a password, it will automatically hide the keys. I'm pretty sure it'll let you know if you have caps lock on, like I just turned caps lock on and it shows up over there on the right. So tons of built in functionality we get out of the box with this secure field. And you guys will notice I can start typing in there and I just get that stuff for free, which is so, so cool. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and keep going. Let's go ahead and add our image to this. So I'm going to say image. Oops, I have caps lock on still have some fun with this image. And this is in my assets folder as messenger app icon dot resizable dot frame width and height of 200 by 200. Um, maybe let's do 180 by 180. That's a little bit large for me. Awesome. And let's go ahead and uh, wrap these two text fields in their own VStack guys so we can sort of control the spacing between these two elements without having to mess with the this uh, like the spacing between the image and each individual text field. So what I mean by that is let's imagine we want some spacing and I did like 16, but let's imagine I wanted to control the spacing between these two text fields, um, you know, by themselves and treat them as one single entity or one single stack or a sub stack, you could say. I can just cut that, put them in their own V stack and paste it there. And that way I have more control over the spacing between these two text fields. So this looks pretty good right now. Uh, I'm gonna actually go ahead and make this spacing 24. Right, and I, we can keep that spacing there as is, but you guys notice now that we get that uh, spacing of 24 pixels between this image and then this stack, which contains these two text fields. So it goes back to that concept of creating sub stacks within your overall stacks, guys. And like I said before, this is something that you just get the hang of with experience. So once again, my reasoning behind this is, I wanna control the spacing of these two text fields 
um, as a single entity or treat them as a single stack within this overall sub stack, which is why I did that. Not necessary, but it definitely helps keep things cleaner, more organized, and gives you more control over your user interface. So let's go ahead and just create this login button now, guys, and finish this up. So outside of that V stack, I'm going to create a button action label. We can just say print login here or something. And then the label is going to be text. And we're going to say log in dot font is dot headline dot foreground color is dot white dot frame width and height. And I'm just going to bang this out is 360 by 48 dot background is color dot blue. Right. So that looks pretty good. I believe we can just say dot blue for which for the shorthand notation and then corner radius of 10 pixels. And that looks phenomenal, guys. So let's go ahead and see that we can just uh, we can click that guy there. And that looks really, really good. Let's go ahead and run our app one more time just to see what this looks like. So that looks pretty solid to me. And you guys will notice that when my keyboard shows, bam, it beautifully moves all of that up right to the top of the screen and adjust the frame of my view to make sure it accommodates for this keyboard showing and hiding, right? Absolutely beautiful. My auto capitalization is set up nicely. My secure field is set up nicely. And this is just looking absolutely fire, guys. So one more thing I wanna do before we wrap this video up is go over how we can look at the text parameters that the user has entered into these fields. So let's go ahead and add just a simple um, action in our button here. We're not just gonna print login, right? You guys can see here that that's showing up in the console. Let's just go ahead and add some really simple print statements, guys. We're gonna say print uh, email is email print password is password and let's go ahead and run that and just see what we get back so let me just go ahead and enter like a simple email dot com and go ahead and hit login and you guys will notice that that prints exactly what i have in my fields right so like I said before, guys, these state properties are what keep track of or store the value of the text that gets typed into those text fields, right? So that's very important to understand. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. That is an awesome introduction into text fields. They're not super complicated. And this is something that we're going to be using a lot when we start building mobile apps, when we have to build out these like login pages or really anything that requires a user to enter data into the application, whether it's a login form, a, a profile page with some sort of customization, a credit card form, whatever it may be. So that's going to wrap it up for this one, guys. In the next module, we are going to be talking about this concept of binding properties, which is something that we saw we had to work with with these text fields. And that's going to be super exciting. So we'll see you there. Peace.